Welcome back to another episode of Fox and Fix It. Hope you got your coffee ready. Today, we're back working on the 82 Civic. I've been having a problem with uh, an electrical issue. Every time I turn the headlights on, every light on the car pulses really rapidly. Faintly, but really rapidly. Uh, I think it's what took out the alternator which actually it was the voltage regulator that died but i think this is the root cause of all of the electrical problems that we've had with the charging system so uh, let's go over here i'll show you what i found and then we'll get to fixing it back in 1982 at least with this honda they were not running relays to run high-powered electrical systems such as the headlights they're running it all through the headlight switch not the greatest idea they've ever had honestly but that's what they did. You could be running low voltage off the ignition out to a relay and just running high amperage only battery to relay to headlights. There's no reason to track this farther. It draws more amperage to run longer lines and with more connections, you've got more resistance and more amperage and you see where I'm going. Somebody apparently thought it was a great idea to get into this headlight switch. I don't know if it was replaced or rewired or what, but there are at least four, possibly five junctions here that are just wire nuts and electrical tape. You should never use wire nuts in a car. It's a terrible idea, and I don't really know how this hasn't burnt to the ground yet, but it didn't. So step one, I've already done for us, and that's disconnect the battery. Now let's get to fixing these electrical wires. Conveniently, they're all the same color. Huh? That's gonna make it fun. Yeah, that's a great connection. I want enough room where I can solder and heat shrink. So that should, that should give us plenty. I can put the heat shrink back here and then slip it forward once you do it. It's important to put your heat shrink on first. We're gonna do one of these at normal speed and then I'll throw it in time lapse because you'll get the gist. The trick is gonna be to not burn this entire thing to the ground while I'm soldering. I'm not the best at soldering. It's hard to twist them when you can't really grab wires to twist because the wires are like an inch and a half long. Uh, that's about as good as I'm gonna be able to get that. I don't necessarily recommend the open flame technique with soldering, especially electrical in a steering column, but um, it's kind of what I have right now, so sorry. This will be the wrong portion of the right way to do this. All right, that should be plenty of solder. I didn't seem to melt anything. I think we're good. Didn't get it too hot, so we should be able to slip this heat shrink right over it. There we go. I almost heat, heat shrink this real quick. There we go. All right, um, so I've got to do that three more times. It's, uh, it's fun, you'll see. this done it's not the cleanest job I've ever done but it is much more solid than it used to be now what we're gonna do is we're gonna zip tie them up it's because I don't know what connections may be loose on the end of this headlight switch now, I don't want this zip tie cutting through the insulation of the wires that we just repaired so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take an old piece of 3 8 hose and I'm gonna use it like a wire loom there we go you just cut it to length and as long as I cut that all the way through which apparently I didn't hmm Watch your fingers when you do this, by the way. There we go. Now we're all the way through. So then we'll just wrap this around the wires, and then we'll wrap the zip tie around that to the steering column. And that's gonna hopefully save those wires. Got my piece of hose here on my little bundle of wires. So our zip tie won't hurt it, and we'll zip tie this up to the steering column. There we go. That seems to be nice and solid. I'll show you here in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. There we go. I've got my wires running off of the switch and then through the little loom we created with the zip tie so it's not gonna wiggle anywhere and we should be good. All right. 
right. Headlights engage. Hold on. That didn't fix anything. So this whole thing went off the rails. And let me show you where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. That's Come on. As you can see, things kind of got out of control. Uh, steering column was taken apart. Got the headlight switch apart. And when I dropped this out, I did take the relay apart, which is right here. If I can get that out of the way. There's two screws. You can pop it off. And there's literally four sets of points in there. Two for the turn signal and two for the headlights. I cleaned all those up, put this back together. I don't really think that helped, but it didn't hurt anything either. Uh, so what I found out was I thought was in the headlight switch is not in the headlight switch, but that's, that's cleaner now. After that, we come back over here to the regulator side of it. I did all of the by the book regulator pin testing for the alternator and for the regulator. It passed, but I swapped it out anyways with a mechanical one that matches OE instead of solid state. Uh, that seemed to have actually made matters worse. That didn't do anything. It's not the regulator. It's not the alternator. What did happen is when I moved the wires, the problem went away. And I put the wires back, and the problem came back. So somewhere in this section is the issue. All the factory harness stuff is still there tape-wise. I mean, nothing's been torn apart. Harness down here was touching the voltage regulator, so I've moved everything this way and I'm gonna zip tie it away from it. The only other thing I found, other than possibly something with an induced voltage through the harness, maybe, is I found corroded terminals here at the main bus bar for the alternator. That's pretty corroded. Uh, and this is one of the terminals. And it looks just as bad on the other side. This one, not so much. Um, a little bit on the back side, I guess. So, uh, I guess now what we're going to do is I am going to clean these up with just some sandpaper. Just some whatever purple grid I have. It's 60, I guess, apparently. That's beside the point. I'm just I'm so tired. I can't even talk straight right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that up. I'm going to clean this up, and I'm going to clean this up. We're going to put this back together. We are going to zip tie this harness away from the voltage regulator. And uh, that should be it, because it's right there is the issue. It's one of those things. This is the fun you have with project cars. Uh, sometimes you chase your tail for hours, maybe days, possibly weeks. And finally, you find something that definitely does it. You narrow it down, you narrow it down, you narrow it down, and you get to here. This is going to fix the problem. I don't know which one of the two is the issue. We're going to take care of both at once. Now, the way I've been testing the system was... Uh, with the issue that I had with the voltage fluctuation, I also noticed as soon as I turned the car on, if the headlights were on, it was dropping the RPMs by at least 200 RPMs, which is way too much of a load for an engine like this. Even though it's a small engine with 200,000 miles on it, 200 RPMs is way too much of a drop for headlights. So I knew it was, it was overcharging. It was definitely pulling too many amps. I didn't know why. Since I have pulled those wires out of the way and cleaned those up, it drops less than 50 RPMs, and I don't have the fluctuation. You can definitely hear it's not loading the engine up. So while I don't have the capability to test amp draw, that's how I'm testing amp draw is by basically engine load. So when you don't have the tools and you don't have the talent, uh, it just takes longer. No matter what happens, we'll see you next time.